Welcome to 3 to 1 exams. Today, we're looking at economics, and our topic for today is the economic system. A very interesting topic in economics, economic um, system. Let's start with the capitalist economic system. The capitalist economic system. What do we refer to as a capitalist economic system? Now, before I even go into discussing this capitalist economic system, uh, but let's just move. Capitalist economic system. Now, this is an economic system where the means of production, distribution, and exchange, and exchange is mainly controlled is mainly controlled by the private individual by the private individual and little participation by the government so which means that the means of production How are you now? It's mostly in the hands of the private of the private individuals. Now, so when we talk about capitalist economy system, capitalist economy system is just an economy system whereby the means of production, the means of distribution, is majorly in the hands of the private individuals why the government does little participation in the economic affairs of the state. Now, another name for capitalist economic system is also called a centrally, is, is also called, another name for capitalist economy, another name for the capitalist economy, so if I don't, capitalist economy could also be referred to as what? A free market economy. A free market economy or what they call the license fair economy. So if you don't call it a capitalist economy, you can call it what? A market economy or a free market economy or a license fair economy. Now this is an economic system whereby the means of production distribution is being handled majorly by the private individual. Now take note that in most cases, the people that manage the resources of the country or of a state could either be the government or could either be the who, the private individual. Now, a situation whereby the government has, the private individual has a larger control of the resources of the state is what we actually refer to as what? The capitalist economic system. So take note, if you don't call it a capitalist economic system, you can call it what? A free market economy, what they call a market economy, or you call it a license fair economy. Now, what are now the basic features of a capitalist economy? Number one, capitalist economy system is a profit-oriented economy. Now, why do we say it's a profit-oriented economy? Because the major essence of people going into production in that system is for profit maximization. For what? For profit maximization and loss minimization. So their essence is to maximize profit. And, and how do they maximize profit? By minimizing loss or by minimizing cost. Now, so which means that, so this, this is one of the major features of the capitalist economy system. Number two, it is characterized by private ownership of properties. It is characterized by private ownership of property. It is characterized by what? Private ownership of what? Property. So which means the private individuals has access to owning private um, um, properties. Now the economic system in this, the, the economic activities in this economic system are mainly controlled by private individuals. So which means the private individual has a major control while the government has what? Little control. Little control in terms of security provision. So the government come in in a little way to provide um, 
security by the, arm, by the use of the armed forces. So the economic activities in this economic system are mainly controlled by private um, individuals. Now, all products produced are tended for market. All the products being produced are tended for market. Why are they tended for market? Because they are for sales. They are for resale or sales. So which means that what? The product being produced in this economic system are majorly for the market. Now, why are they for the market? Because every product being produced has a targeted market. So the market that a particular product is targeted for is what exactly the private individual is concerned about. Now, number next is laborers are regarded as marketable commodities. Now, why, why is labor? regarded as a marketable commodity. Labor is regarded as a marketable commodity because it is the labor that is used for production. Now, which means that every producer tends towards having enough laborers he can use for production. So the higher the laborer you have, the higher your output level, and the lower the labor you have, the lower the output level. So which means that labors are marketable commodities, which means you can buy labor services to increase your output. So take note that what the labor services, the labor service increases the output, increases the output. Now number next. But look at what the advantages of a capitalist economic system. So let's look at what advantages of a capitalist economic um, system. Number one, it's what it grants maximum freedom of enterprise. Now let me explain this one now. Now what do you mean by maximum freedom of enterprise? Maximum freedom of enterprise here represents that what private individuals has the tendency or have the capacity to do what they want to do, which means what it encourages. It encourages private initiatives. It encourages what? Private what? Initiatives. It encourages private initiatives. Now, number next, it does not suppress individuals' initiative. Look at it here now. It does not suppress what? Individuals' initiative. So, which means what? An individual can bring whatever initiative he has into the market. Are we now? He can bring... So he can bring any private initiative he has to the world, to the market. So number three, it gives rise to fast economic world development. So which means that what? The capitalist economic system, the capitalist system speeds the rate of development. The capitalist system speeds up the rate of what? Development in the country. Then... Number three, it encourages what? Healthy competition among investors. Now, how does it encourage healthy competition among investors? Because different individuals or different individual investors will come into the market. I don't know. Different what? Individual investors comes into the market. So it encourages what? Um... Um, competition among what investors consumers exercise their right by choice and pick so here consumers are called consumer sovereignty consumers um consumer sovereignty consumers sovereignty now under the consumer sovereignty what exactly do we refer to so which means an a consumer has the right to choose to pick whatever product he wants to buy. Have you discovered that when you go to the market to buy a particular commodity, let's assume you are being asked to go to the market to buy, let's assume, tomato. And you go to the first point where they sell tomato. You look at that tomato very clearly. You don't like the tomato, but you like the woman. You look at it and say, okay, ah, madam, please, I like you, but this tomato is not good. You can walk away. Go to another person selling the tomato again. You go to another person, the tomato is not bad, or the tomato is very bad, and the woman, not very nice. Say, mother, you are not even nice and your tomato is not even good. You walk to another producer. Now, the reason you have the ability to walk from one individual seller to another 
is because you have what they call the consumer sovereignty. So consumer sovereignty gives you the right to pick or buy a product from whoever you decide to buy the product from without anybody interfering in that your choice or in that your pick. So this is what the capitalist economic system gives to us. Then lastly, it discourages government or state monopoly. So which means government or state monopoly is being discouraged. Why is it being discouraged? It's discouraged because that what government will no longer have the right to produce exclusively some product. Why? Because private individuals are already in the world business of production. So therefore, government monopoly is being broken. I will now. So it discourages what government what monopoly. Now we now have the disadvantages of the capitalist economic um, system. Number one, disadvantage of the capitalist economic system is that what it leads to exploitation of the masses. Now why? The masses are being exploited through increase in prices of goods and services. I will now exploitation comes through what high price level. So which means that what in a capitalist economic system, there is every tendency that the masses might be exploited. Now why would the masses be exploited? The masses will be exploited because there is every tendency the private individuals will increase the prices of the product. Now once the private individual increases the prices of the product, what happens is that what it leads to what they call what exploitation of the masses. Now why is it so? Because in that case they're going to have what they call a private monopoly. And take note that once a person has what they call a monopoly, he has a tendency of controlling two things. Number one, either control price or control the output. How will a monopolist increase price by controlling output? A monopolist increases price by controlling output through the reduction in the supply of the output. And once the output is being reduced in supply, prices tend to what? To go up. Now, how does the uh, monopolist also control output by price? He can reduce the price of the product for the purpose of increasing the output. So take note of these two points, that a monopolist has the tendency of increasing price and, also, and by controlling price or output. But a monopolist cannot control the two at the same time. He can either control price by affecting output or control output by affecting price. Number two, disadvantages of a capitalist econ economic system. It encourages unequal economic development. Now this is true. Now why is it that what it brings about unequal economic de development? Now you discover that what the private individuals can decide to focus on a particular sector and leave a sector whereby he does not benefit from. And as a result of that, development will be uneven. So which means that a particular sector, a particular area would be developed while another area will be what? Will not be what? Developed. Now this is brought into picture as a result of the capitalist economic world system and uneven economic um, development. Number three, it widens the gap between the rich and the poor. This is so true. Now you discover in a capitalist economic system where the rich lives is different from where the poor lives. Where the rich the, the cars they drive, the hospital they use, the things, the facilities they use. Trust me, it is actually different from what the poor uses. Now, what widens this gap between the rich and the poor? It is a capitalist economy system. Why? Because resources is being handled by a few individuals. By few individuals. So because resources is in their hand, there is always a disparity. I don't know. There is always a what a disparity between the rich and the poor between the rich and the poor number four it might give rise to unhealthy competition among investors now this is true now why would there be an unhealthy competition among investors because every investor will try to win the uh, the, the, the demand from the populace. And as a result of that, different things might be done for the purpose of what? Winning the demand side of the economy. And because it is the demand side of the economy that determines if their product will be bought or not. So it can lead to an unhealthy competition among investors. It encourages hoarding of goods. Now, what is the purpose why goods are being hoarded? 
goods are being hauled for the purpose of what? Exploitation. Exploitation in the sense that what? Prices will be increased. Now, naturally, you will discover that what? Whenever there is scarcity of goods, what happens is that what? Prices of such commodities tends to increase. So what would the government, what happens in a, what, what the, one of the disadvantage of a capitalist system is that what? It encourages the hoarding of goods. Now, they hoard goods for the purpose of increasing the prices at a near future. Without make, not taking into consideration that the cost of production of those goods has not increased. But because they want to create artificial scarcity, so take note, hoarding means artificial scarcity. Hoarding means artificial scarcity. Lastly, it discourages government or state monopoly. So here, government monopoly is discouraged. Government having total control is actually discouraged in a capitalist economic um, system. Now, this brings us to the end of this lesson. See you in our next lesson.